live from St. Augustine. It's Saturday night. Yay! All right. It's uh, January 21st, 2023, and I'm Dr. Jay Hartley in St. Augustine, Florida, and we are have tonight um, from Tampa, Dr. Mike LaRocca, and he's going to tell us about his life, and he's a 1968 Columbia College of Chiropractic uh, graduate in New York City. So without further ado, here's Dr. Mike. Thank you. Thank you for everybody being here in such an inclement evening, especially for Florida. This is, this is not unusual weather, as you know. But um, I'd like to start off with that no matter where you go, there you are. We take ourselves with us, whether in Europe, Asia, on the cruise we're just talking about, Right now, tonight, we take ourselves wherever we go. We take our perceptions, we take our beliefs, we take our learned habits and so on, and then that becomes ours, whether it's right or wrong to somebody else, this has to be the way we're looking at things. Just like, here's a hand, that's what you see. But this is what I see. That's something to somebody. This is something to somebody. This is something to somebody. So we take our beliefs of all the little hand gestures I did. What does that mean to you when you see that? There's, I grew up in the, in the, I was born in 1945. I grew up in the 50s and I'm a doo-wop guy. I still listen to doo-wop, I go to the fitness center, I turn my Pandora on, and I'm listening to music from 56, 57 to the early 60s and so on. And that's my enjoyment. It gives a different kind of feeling to me. And one of the great songs that I always enjoy, a group called Dubs, D-U-B-S. And the title of the song is, uh, The Life is But a Dream. Some of the words of life is but a dream. It's what you make it. It's not always what it seems. Life has its music. Life has its song. So what does it mean to you when we dream? Even in our dreams, everyone's dreamt somewhere down the line, okay? And in our dreams, you can have a horror dream. Oh, our heart is beating a mile a minute. Our blood pressure is going. We're running. We're huffing and puffing. And then suddenly we say, this is a dream. I shouldn't be running. I'm controlling this dream. This is my dream. And suddenly we turn things around, and now we become heroes. We've begun to fight against whatever this, this horrible thing is that's chasing after us. We change the dream around. And in this block of head over here, we have thought patterns, beliefs once again. And as these nerve fibers are twitching back and forth, not only we create our physiological changes in our body when we're dreaming, anything from horror and stress to joy and peaceful things, and even romantic dreams, how can't you have an orgasm? From in here, that's pretty powerful. What if we took that and controlled it, owned it. Each day we wake up, and I know I do morning readings, not religious things, I'm not a religious person, I'm a spiritual person. I do all my little readings. One of my favorite authors, the authors is, is Wayne Dyer. He's one of my favorite authors. He's always, I've seen him transition from a psychologist to a human being, two kind of people. And we take that, and we begin our day on the right path. So we need to change this on a daily basis. And life is but a dream. It truly is. I can remember when I first got involved with chiropractic. I was 1956. I had athletic injury. What you see these ice skaters do in the championships, running, spinning, <laughs> twisting. I used to do it with roller skates. And even if you landed a, roll, a, a, a jump without even falling, you got about two feet off the ground, you landed on one leg. 
And that's consistently jamming up. So I was in the state championship in New Jersey and landed a jump and some, felt like somebody ripped my pelvis open. Tremendous, I couldn't have believed it. Just some warm ups. They went back and they stretched me and just lifted me. And, and obviously I couldn't compete that day. I had to stay around all day for the person who drove me there. They had to stay there for the whole day. In the evening time, I was driven home and just about chugged up the stairs to my, to my home. And there was, of course, my parents were there and my uncle was there. So we got to take, it was a Sunday night, by the way. My father's policeman said, let's take him to the doctor. And in the city is a home office combination. So we they carried me literally into the car, sat in the car, knocked on the orthopedist door, and the wife answered the door and said, it's Sunday night. You know, come back tomorrow. My uncle, who had been to a chiropractor, said, let's take him to the chiropractor. My father was, well, he's a kid. He's going to hurt him. What are you talking about? How can you take a kid to a chiropractor? Just take him, just take him. Knocked on the door, come on in. I received an adjustment. He was a brand new chiropractor. He used to come to my home on a daily basis, check and adjust him in my home, 1956. Even at that young age, this chiropractor was sharing with me a principle. It wasn't just a twist and a push and so on. He handed me some things to read, little pamphlets. And at that point, my dream began. I want to be a chiropractor. And you would ask me at any age, 11, 12, 13, 14, chiropractor, 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 <laughs> that my neighbors and, and so on was Dr. Mike, Dr. Mike, Dr. Mike, I was a teenager and Dr. Mike. A dream. And even though I'm not religious, I would pray every day to be a chiropractor. Let me pass college. Let me pass the entrance. Let me get through college. Let me get to chiropractor school. Dream made brought to life my dreams. 1968, I graduated from Killing Student Chiropractic. Prior to that, I was practicing out of my home. My first four patients had a dressing table in my basement. First four patients, I was making actually house calls at that time. Mm -hmm. One was a young man who broke his neck. He was a quadriplegic. Broke his neck in one of these backyard four foot pools. wires hold his neck together, very, very skinny, had such bad circulation to his, to his legs and feet, it was just like encrusted feet with dead skin. Weak person, you look at him crooked, he was sick that year. I went to adjust him, I was adjusting him right in his home. And we took pictures of him. He was able to get in and out of the wheelchair by himself. He got some strength in his leg, his arms. He moved from the bed into the wheelchair, became mobile. His skin was like, ba like baby skin. No more circulation problems. Ate well, gained weight. Everybody else got the flu except him. Mm -hmm. First patient. Another patient was a, the police chief. He had con chronic vertigo, Menier syndrome. Came to my basement, laid him down, <coughs> just his atlas. Another patient, 40-something-year-old woman, agrophobia. What does that say in the book? Chiropractic is good for agrophobia. We just adjusted because she needed an adjustment. P.S., that was it. She was out driving, doing everything that was to do. She felt the adjustment. She believed and knew that there was something that was happening to her that made that change work. The other fourth patient was an individual. I remember, must have been in the seventh grade. There was a, a train bridge over a bay. 
and the brakeman didn't figure things out right, the bridge was open and the train went over. Dozens of people were killed. The brakeman, him, tremendous anxiety, stress, big popping pills, popping pills. He wound up having toxic brain damage from all the medication he was taking. Couldn't speak, dribbling, just very, very flimsy and so on. Went to his home, did adjustment, adjustment, became a healthy individual. Still had toxic brain damage, but he functioned the best that he could be for a person with brain damage. That's the dream. You share your dream with these people. There's no fun doing this, push, push, twist, bang, but there's no fun in that. It's like doing piecework. You know, you put this in, put that on, clip together, next thing, put this on. There's no fun in this. It's the bigness of what we do. That's what makes that meaningful to us. You see some people from Kairos and Kairos, I'm eight years, I'm burnt out. Yeah, because this is all they do in peace work. There's no purpose to it. There's no passion to it. They're just doing the work. Give me, next up, give me, next up. There's nothing to it. We as chiropractors, we have a reason for being. We have a principle of life. It is our purpose. And we want to share that purpose. And every time we lay our hands on the patient, we're animating, we're bringing this ethereal thing, this above thing, into life expression through that adjustment. That's chiropractic. Whether it's one bone or 10 bones. Your intent. What is your intent? Well, I have a neck ache, back ache, toe ache. Yeah, great, okay. A lot of people have that. And that's that the little chart back there, the peripheral nervous system. Well, how about the other chart over here, the autonomic nervous system? From base of the head to tailbone, there's 31 pairs of nerve openings. All the nerves from brain cells, the tissue cells, that pass through these 31 pair of nerve openings, and from all parts of the body, back into the same 31 pair of nerve openings, to tell the brain what its needs are. And then we get a response back. So the bigness of adjustment, there's no neck ache adjustment, there's no back ache adjustment, there's no brain toxic adjustment, there's no agoraphobic adjustment. There's an adjustment. Deliver that. And it may only be that one adjustment that changes that person's life very dramatically. And that person may never come back again. What happened? What did I do? Did I say something wrong? all that one person wanted. Maybe that's all they needed. Ours are just to do. We have a service hand, we have a business hand. It needs to be in balance. You can give everything away for free and you're not going to be in business much longer because you cannot afford the rent and all your expenses. It has to be something. It has to be something. And if you're too much business, you get a shrivel of service hand, well, you know what? <laughs> you're gonna be scrubbing your hands because you know what he's here. My God, my rent is coming to. <laughs> so everything needs to be in balance. Chiropractic. And that's living through the principle and experiencing the principle is what separates us from all the other people. I'll drive on the roadway and going to work, people going to work, coming home from work, and I say, but for the grace of God go I. For the next 45 years, these folks are gonna be sitting in the same traffic to work, same traffic coming back from work. We don't do that. 
We can pick and choose the days that we want to be in the office. We pick and choose the hours that we wish to be in the office. And we don't have to be in the office five and a half days a week. For me, I've only worked in the office three days a week from day one. I certainly could not afford, so to speak, three days a week, but would five days a week make it any financially any better? I don't think so. But for me, it detracted from my living experience. I had two young children at the time. I wanted to make sure that I was home to enjoy them. And I always, seven days a week, made it known to the patients that I took care of, I'm available for them. And way back then, even when I moved to Florida, because I practiced in New Jersey for nine years before I came to Florida, we had an off-premise extension. Rang in the office, rang in my home. And if I wasn't at home, the machine would pick it up. Listen to the machine, pick it up. You hurt, come on now, let's go. Let's see you at 10 o'clock. And if there's a person who was really in acute pain or so on, you know, so on a Monday, don't wait till Wednesday. I'm going to see you tomorrow. You're going to work tomorrow? No, I can't work. I'm going to see you in the office at 10 o'clock. I'm going to come in just for you. So I made myself available. Because if it were me on their end, how would I want to be treated? I would certainly really appreciate getting out of this pain as fast as possible. So how do I want to be treated? And that's how I took care of the folks that allowed me to take care of them. And because of that, I enjoyed myself better. I enjoyed being on purpose, giving. You ever heard the term, give for the sake of giving, love for the sake of loving, okay? And that's it, you're just doing without expectation of return. But the powers that made the body Heals the body. The power always oversees our well-being. If you serve the power, the power will always serve us. And it becomes so much more enjoyable what we do. I said earlier, we have a principle that we have a base to work from. Other folks don't have that. Once again, not to do religion, but yeah, sometime religion is their base. Someday when I die, I have a higher place. Huh. How about the now? How about when we're alive now? How are we enjoying ourselves now? Have we gotten ourselves into a point of out of balance with service and family and enjoyment and travel? and recuperation, mentally, physically. For me, I was always in balance. And I enjoyed my life experience. I didn't have to wait 45 years to say, oh, I can take three days, I can take a week off from the office. So we need to be in balance as chiropractors. We have what we need as far as the foundation. Just practice the way we are fearless of practicing. You know, there's always those terms. If you had no fear, what would you do? Would you travel? Would you work more? Would you watch what you eat? Why can't you eat this? Because, you know, I could take these vitamins, because then these vitamins would help me. Well, you know what, how is that any different, taking a vitamin to move your bowels, taking a vitamin to, to go to sleep, taking a vitamin for, for muscle relief? You mother take a drug. It's the same thing in here. You're taking a vitamin as doing something, and you're making your body do something. Time and place and everything. Yeah, our nutrients are wonderful. We should be eating better. You know, yes, be aware of all these little things. But 
the last thing we never want to say is, our last breath, I should have had more ice cream. Yeah. Life is a joyful event. We should have lots of serendipitous moments in our life. When I was growing up, there was an era that there was nothing, and then suddenly there was something. I remember being no television, and then we had a television. 1951-ish. Being from New York City area, we had lots of TV programs. NBC, AB, NBC, CBS, those big stations were radio stations and they transitioned a lot of those programming into TV. Gunsmoke was a radio program. Dragnet, I don't know if you remember these terms, Dragnet was a radio program. Jack Benny Show, Red Skelton Show, uh, Milton Burrow Show, Gracie and Allen, on and on and on and on. They were radio programs, they transitioned into television. So we were fortunate we had that. And I remember around maybe 72, give or take a year, a new station was coming on TV. We had CBS, we had NBC, and now we're going to have ABC. Simple, serendipitous moment. Had more stuff to watch. Yeah. That came from an era when you had the radios. And then you had, tr they made transistors. You had a little radio you could put in your pocket. Transistors. This is amazing. And those kind of events went on. So I had a lot of serendipitous moments growing up. We had human beings that we interacted with from the neighborhood. It wasn't fake people. Dozens of kids, dozens, all age groups. Today, you gotta have your child make an appointment to see another kid for the play date. And if the kid doesn't have organized sports, he ain't moving his body. Forget street stuff. So with the serendipitous moments that we're experiencing now in our lives, Look for them. They're there. Sometimes we become so jaded that we overlook these things. Ah, you got another guy in the moon? Jesus Christ, you know, save, save the money. You know, do something over here. Well, every time they send somebody to space, they make a whole lot of stuff to send them to space that we enjoy. Velcro. It's a space age thing. You know? So all those little things are there. We need to focus on enduring ourselves because this is all we have. And time goes by real quickly. Very quickly. To waste a day. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Adopt a grand purpose for you as a person, as a family. Write stuff down. I have goals, I write them down. Every, every new year, rewrite them and add to them and victory on this and attain that. I read them every day with my beginning of my day reading. Have something to shoot for rather than just meandering. Well, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, could be. Uh, let's talk about it later. Write it down. And then have action steps towards it. Dreams without action are just, could be a nightmare. <laughs> so what are we doing with our lives? I said before, we have a, we're so fortunate as chiropractors to have a reason for being and that and then enlivening that reasoning, that purpose with each adjustment and then we get paid for it. That's pretty good. Enjoy each of the people that come in. 
If it's the one, it's the one. You're going to change their life. And the fastest way of getting more people is ask for them. Hey, how about your spouse getting a spine check? How about your kids getting a spine check? Well, they don't have any back aches. Who's talking about back aches? Do you have a medicine cabinet in your home, Mrs. Jones? Or do you have a toiletry cabinet? Well, it's a nice thing. What do you mean, back there? Well, look inside there. What do you have inside there? You got some Vaseline. You got some... This got some Pepto Bismol. You got some some headache Tylenol from last year. You got an old prescription from last. Just in case I get this year, I can pop those pills in myself for a few bucks. What's inside that cabinet with the mirror on it? If you find yourself they have stuff in there, well, why don't you take care of health? And health is a very difficult concept. We never talk talked about health. The allopathic program is treating sickness. And the marketers are so adept at disguising this stuff that you see people running on horses, they're splashing <laughs> and having loads of fun. <laughs> and then they tell you, if you got the rookie flukes, you know, take this here. It causes you bond the plague, it causes Ebola, you can go bald, you can go blind, sometimes people die, but it helps you with the rookie flukes. <laughs> and people never hear that because they're mesmerized oh. by the action on the TV. And we don't want to frighten the people that are with us, but just make them aware. You know the third leading cause of death in the United States, Mrs. Jones? Oh, what are you talking about? Heart attack is number one, cancer number two. Number three is iatrogenic, which means doctor induced. Diagnosis was correct, medication killed them. <laughs> Diagnosis is wrong, medication killed them. Aspirin, something like 3,000 people a year die from severe liver damage within one aspirin, one Tylenol, I should say, not it's one Tylenol. Crazy. And it goes on and on and on. S hospital staff infected. If you live in a garbage dump, you would not get those, that kind of illness. Staff, hospital staff, everyone lives in hospitals. Had a patient went in for a knee replacement, died in the hospital. Hospital staff infection. My God, what a shock. You signed it. It said you could die, you can this, you could, you signed, yeah, because I'm not going to read 14 pages of tiny little, you know, eight coin print. You know, I have faith and confidence in how I'm going to come through this here thing because you know what you're doing. You know, a lot of people have this here done. I should be the same kind of person. Should be. There's a time and place for everything. And we really won't reach everybody that we want to reach. It's only those who want to be reached. And accept the principle. We come in just for the help of it. And those are the ones that we maybe share a little bit more with because they're there a little bit longer. And the newbies share just for the purpose of sharing. We are doctors, we are teachers. Well, I've said it so many times, but that's what it is. That's what we do, is share, because this takes a second. What are we seeing in between those seconds? What's, what are we sharing? Well, I'm, the front, I'm running a little bit late, I, I, I don't want to say. If it's in your head, say it. That person needs it at that time. Say it. You don't have to go to a whole lecture. Just say the few thoughts.
possibilities. All possibilities are endless. We just have to have the intent and the courage to move forward, to make a change. And forget about the other people out here whose bones are drying in the sun. <laughs> oh, I tried it, didn't work. Well, maybe it's that one extra day. And what's failure? We always have all these scientists, Edison, you tried 10,000 filaments, that didn't work, you know. Now you find the, the right filament. It's true. If we have a purpose, if we see that end point there, we see that light there, we need to steadily move towards it. Yeah, wouldn't if we are here and there, because we're humans. We have stuff on our shoulders that we've been told about. Oh, you can't, you shouldn't, don't. Won't rock the boat. My family went ballistic when I said, we're getting rid of everything, we're moving to Florida. What? <laughs> then you know what, a handful of years later, everybody's in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I'd be still freezing my butt up off there. Yeah. And I strictly came from the weather. That's all I came for, the weather. I can go anywhere. What's your possibilities? Make them more probable by just doing. Yeah, it's, it's some fearful. You may lose a few bucks. You tried it, why didn't it work? Let me do it another way. Because I know I want to get there. Even coming here, I used to take Route 4 to come up 95, and it was, ho it was always horrible. Even just go to Orlando, it's outrageous, the traffic, the stopping and, and going. You can only, oh, I, I get so angry, I can wish that. Hope his head's laying on the ground to oh. make my, me wait in this traffic all of these hour, half hour. And you're going to say, what happened? I was going stop, going stop, going, and then now I'm doing 70. Uh, what happened? Where was it? And going home the same way. So today coming up, I took a different route. I came up 75 towards Ocala, got on 301, got on 20. Some places are doing 35, some places are doing 40. I never stopped for one moment. I got here in three hours and, three hours and 35 minutes from Florida. Really good. I'm taking the same road back. I could have said, you know, it's a different road. Jeez, I don't know. I, 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 what is something? What do you mean, what's something? Have you have a phone now? Okay. You can do anything on a, on a cell phone. And I took a different road than I ever took before. And it was wonderful. Rolling hills. It's not all flat palm trees. It was a lucky ride. Take a chance, take a, there's a, there's a little thing in life, but it's, a, it's an extension for what I'm used to doing. Take the little steps. You always research things you want to change. Do some homework. What's rent like in another place? Can I find somebody to work that for me? Maybe partner with somebody. They have an established practice already. Maybe you should partner with them. And we're gonna do this. You can have your private practice. That's you. And we call this other thing ABC, X, Y, Z. And then people come in for the ABC, X, Y, Z portion of it. We'll, we'll, spl we'll split up expenses and so on down the line. Why not? And if you do have Associates, don't pay them in the dark. Share with them. They have expenses as well. I wonder why they learn and then gone. Share with them. Pay a bonus. You have your base and here's a bonus. So many adjustments. 
get it bones. If you were them, can you live on your, your pay that you give them? <laughs> yeah, my front desk person, they start at $21 an hour, front desk person. I have offices, every office is only three days a week. Some docs choose to work five days, some are four days, some are three days. I leave it up to them and then we mix and match where they need to go to. That's what they want to do with their life. Works out well for me, works out well for them. And even with that there, that's the simplicity we're talking about. We still have some docs that are just It's what? New patient, it's 20 to 6, and the new patient comes in? What they, what, didn't they tell them we close at 6? Let's, let them fill a perk and they come back next day. Oh. Would they do that if that was their practice and a new patient starts care? No. So those situations, we share with them, it shouldn't be, and then if it continues, they are no longer. I had a car must have with me for eight, eight, nine years. Just released him this past October. He was getting a paycheck. Talked about it, talked about it. Benefit of the doubt, you're not helping the patient, you're not, certainly not helping the office. <coughs> no longer. Now, he's working five and six days a week from seven to seven. That's a job. And he made more money working with me, working seven hours but getting paid for eight hours, having two hours for lunch. Oh well, maybe it's a learned experience for him. And I hate to do those kind of things, but tell, tell a story and tell a story and do this, do that, and so on, yeah, and it doesn't change, then you had need to be courageous enough to release them, to let them go, of course, they're not helping you. They're not helping my possibilities. Certainly their possibilities are, they're not enjoying being a character. So we need to be courageous. You know, the term fearless is that you're not fearful. It is, you don't know the loot. You want to wrestle an alley out from fearless. I'm that, 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 that's, you know, you got nothing to lose. But when you're courageous, you do have that fear. You do have that idea that, God, I could be killed. I could be, but I have to do this to get to there. I have to go through the alligator pond, okay? And be courageous and say, wow. That wasn't even half as bad as I thought it was going to be. So being a chiropractor is magnificent for me. I live the principle. The principle has guided me all my life. Without getting into a whole big thing, maybe sometime they can if you can ask family members, aunts, uncles, parents, and so on, how you grew up. I was able to trace back in utero from in some injury that happened to my mom <laughs> that made my life to where I'm at now. Going through physical experiences Experiencing chiropractic. Coming to Florida. I was in Florida in 1952. I was seven years old. My parents we went to, my brother and I, we were four years older than me, we drove to South Beach. 1952. And this is the wintertime. I said, what? This is wintertime. I'm in shorts. I'm in the weather, I'm in water, I'm in the pool. This is crazy. 
What the hell are we living up there for? When I get old, I'm going to live in Florida. Well, 25 years later, move to Florida. And that took a friend of mine in Jersey to move to Florida, 75-ish. And, you know, we all big practices at the time. And, hmm, he can leave that and move to Florida. I can do that same thing, too. And we did. Sold everything, packed the cars up, and came to Florida. Moved again, just to the physical comfort. So think back in your life that got you to here. People you met, things that happened. Your visions, how your vision has changed, how your vision has expanded to bring you this place, this time. At the end of the day, when we put our heads on the pillow, I wish for you a feeling of fulfillment, a sense of satisfaction, and peace of mind. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Mike. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Right. I um, Thank you for listening. I wanted to uh, give everybody a chance to share if anybody was inspired by Dr. Mike and wanted to share something. I wanted to give him a chance to come up. I know um, this month since we met last, I had uh, a, a really exciting testimonial uh, from a patient. So just before Christmas, we had a six week old come in and the, the girl had not been able to have a bowel movement on her own. She was very colicky. The parents had found our website in the middle of the night and they sent an email um, basically because they were up all night. The baby's crying, um, frustrated, can't go to the bathroom. And um, when I was listening to, to Dr. Mike, it made me thinking about Sid Williams. And he used to take his keys and he would, he would jack the keys and drop them, right? Well, why was he doing that? Because Everybody in this room knows what's going to happen when I drop these keys, right? Absolutely. They're going to fall, right? Well, one thing we learn as chiropractors with our experience is confidence, meaning we see a certain situation and we know what the outcome of that patient getting adjusted is going to be. And so this girl was like our Christmas miracle. She came in two days before Christmas and in her car seat, her head, I can't even turn my head as far as her head was turned. Her head was leaning, but like almost where she was totally flat like this, um, where her ear was totally on her shoulder, low muscle tone, um, parents very frustrated. And as soon as I looked at her, I'm like, this is our Christmas miracle. And so we did a very specific adjustment on her atlas and I just had a feeling that, that she was going to be better after I did the adjustment. So I called them later that night, and they said that she had had a bowel movement. The baby slept better, right? And so they've, they've been very diligent about following up. The baby um, loves to get adjusted. When we put her in a mirror image of her head posture and adjust her atlas, she just like, falls asleep like every single time wow. and it is is really amazing so we have her coming in less often now she's having one to three bowel movements a day she's sleeping through the night and it, it was just like awesome I wanted to share it with you now one thing you think about how far-reaching things you do and say can be so how they ended up on our office was a few years ago we had a three-year-old who had a very similar situation he couldn't go to the bathroom, um, was referred in by another patient that had good results. And the only way he could go to the bathroom was to take a suppository or mechanically force the bowel movement to happen, right? So he gets his first adjustment and on the way home, now he's on a very, he, he didn't really like to eat very much and it was very finicky with his foods. 
And so on his way home, he asked his mother for an apple. And the mom was like, that's strange, because he's never had an apple before. And all of a sudden, he wants to eat an apple. Then he gets home, and he's like, I want a glass of water. He's three years old, so he's starting to be able to vocalize. And the mother is like, wow, that's weird. So later that night, he has his first bowel move that he's ever had in his life unassisted. And so the mother later had done a, a testimonial on YouTube telling the story. This family, when they weren't able to sleep in the middle of the night, watched that video, sent us a message, and now their baby has the same result. So um, anybody else want to share anything? I'll, I'll share something. Okay, Dr. Joe. So we had a cool, a cool testimony, about a, testimony about a month ago, and it's things you don't learn in school, but I've had about three patients with their eyesight change. You know, and, and they come in for low back pain or neck pain, but this lady came in, she's older, low back pain, and we're adjusting her in about three weeks into care. She goes, can this affect, they, they kind of look up at you and they look at like, can this affect my eyes, what you're doing? I'm like, what do you mean? She goes like, she goes, well, I, 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 I'm uh, nearsighted. So when I drive, I have to wear glasses or I can't read the signs. And last week I noticed that I can see now, farsighted. She goes, I don't need the glasses when I'm driving. And, and she goes, could this have anything to do with it? I'm like, well, yeah, absolutely. It's like if we adjust the spine and reduce nerve tension in your spine, your brain starts working better. And so if your brain starts working better, everything starts working better. And I, you know, and I gave her the disclaimer when people are gonna say you're nuts, it doesn't work. There are no nerves from your spine to your eyes. That's what's going on in your brain. But the coolest research coming out is as we adjust the spine, the brain is changing. You know, it's, it's not just about your back pain. I'm happy your back pain's going around, going away. But what I wanna do is I wanna make your life better and enhance your life experience. And it's like we're talking, the adjustment, the principle is really about enhancing life, increasing brain function. And, and you know, with every patient we adjust, this lady's aware of her sight being better, but if we're correcting subluxation and we're reducing nerve tension, their body is getting better. Whether the symptoms are going away or not, they're functioning better. They're having a better life experience. They're gonna be feeling more and, and more in tune with life, more able to be a human being instead of just stuck in a rut, which is subluxation, or emotional, physical, or chemical. So it's really cool in practice, just stuff you don't learn in school is gonna happen that does happen. And even when you don't hear it, some of the most amazing testimonies are the person who got adjusted for life and never got sick and never had cancer and is never on any medication. And those are, those are my favorite miracles when you start them young and they never got sick versus the kid who's terribly sick and gets well. And we always gotta celebrate those people, right? They do everything right and they never get sick, never get cancer, raise children like that. And that's, that's the, the gift of chiropractic. And that's why we start with children and wanna get them healthy and keep them healthy. All right, Joe, thank you very much. And um, we um, have uh, John Bellamo is coming to uh, St. Augustine April 22nd. So everybody put that on their uh, calendar. And uh, watch our Facebook um, page for upcoming speakers, St. Augustine Saturday Night Live. And we will check you guys in February. Have a healthy month and have a great night. Woo.